you are watching the Dr. Nanny Show. Thanks for staying with us. Now, researchers are taking the gut-brain connection a step further and looking at the possible link to other conditions such as autism. Now, studies are finding that the majority of autistic children have poor gut health. Joining us now is Julie Matthews. Now, Julie is a nutritionist and author of Nourishing Hope for Autism. Julie, thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's great to be here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Such a scary disease for, for, for parents. So, you know, what is the research uh, about kids with autism and gut health? Tell us about it. Please. Yeah, sure. There are it's four times more likely that children with autism are going to have gut issues. And if you look at the studies done on children with autism, up to 80% of them have gastrointestinal symptoms. And the research also shows that there is a strong correlation between gastrointestinal symptoms and uh, the severity of their gastrointestinal symptoms and the severity of their autism. So there's, there's quite a link there. And when we look at what's going on, we see big changes in the microbiome. We see a lot of pathogenic bacteria and organisms that we don't see. They can give off toxins and go to the brain and affect the brain. We see diminished levels of beneficial bacteria that we know are so important for preventing anxiety and for uh, having good uh, cognitive function and things like that. And when we don't break down our foods from a simple level, we don't have the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients we need for the brain to function. And I think the other really interesting thing is that we need to break down our foods, and especially the proteins, into the little amino acids. What happens with gluten and dairy is uh, wheat and dairy-based foods is they actually can create long chains of opiates and leak through the, uh, the gut and affect the brain just like morphine or any other type of opiate. So there's a very strong connection with the gut health of children with autism and what's going on in their whole body and affecting their brain. And so yes. how have your patients done yes. when you've changed, uh, given them some of your advice? Right. We see improvements in language. I had one child, he was three years old. He had no language. Uh, three months on a gluten-free and dairy-free diet, he had 200 words. Uh, another uh, child that I know, he was uh, talking to his dad. He didn't really have conversational language. Three days on a special gluten-free diet, wow. and he was able to have a back-and-forth conversation. So that's the other thing I would say: is the is there a is there a real link? Yes. I mean, we see it all the time. I see uh, in, uh, improvements in sociability with their family and their siblings. Improvements in, of course, all the other health things that are going on. Because autism is a whole body condition it's not just a brain disorder so when we look at it we see things going on in the gut that creates inflammation in the body that creates challenges with energy and and all of these other things so skin rashes sleep issues hyperactivity irritability uh, these are not just coincidental these are directly related to the biochemistry of the individual and when we work on the biochemistry of the body we help with the symptoms of autism and so how does that make you feel when you get kids that you know, within days or weeks that, that, that you get them better. I mean, how fulfilling is that? I mean, just at a, at a personal level. It's amazing. I've been doing this for 15 years, and I have to say that it's so rewarding every day. I actually also know children that have recovered from autism. They've lost their diagnosis. They've gone back to their doctor. They're now going to college. So this, I mean, uh, it's not always an easy road, but I have to say that it is the most rewarding thing, and I just love what I do, and I love the brave, courageous parents that are willing to step out there and, you know, f figure this out and work on it. And, and so people, th let's say there are people that are watching from around the country, the world, and they don't have you to okay. guide them. Wh what should they do? The parents who are saying, wow, there's, there could be a connection, mm -hmm. what should they do? So if it's even getting good fat, getting probiotic-rich foods, getting good uh, vegetables and, and all sorts of just healthy food that way, avoiding the pesticides and things, the artificial ingredients. When you're not able to break those down or you don't have proper detoxification for those, you can get hyperactivity, irritability, aggression, very significant. I, I've had a child with very significant aggression due to something simple like taking out artificial additives. So those are simple things anybody can do. And then also a gluten-free, dairy-free diet has been shown to be very, very helpful. It's awesome. And, and you know, we, we've talked about your book. Do you have a website that we can I talk do. about? I do, nourishinghope.com. And also, it's, it's, it's giving hope to people and families with autism. Listen, we're not saying this is the end all, but certainly 
you want to talk about more research that needs to be done, more, more, uh, more of a spotlight needs to be put on this, especially with the growing number of cases of autism. I, you know, I ask anybody, any parents, you know, talk to people, talk to legislators and say, you know, we need more information on this. Instead of suppressing it, let's talk more about it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Certainly life-changing information for kids with autism don't go away. When we come back, we'll have Parthas prescriptions. Please stay with us.